Hey everyone, I'm Shireen Kassam and I am a TEDx speaker. I did my first TEDx in January of 2022. You can check it up here. Highly recommend you check out my TEDx talk before you listen to my advice so you know whether you want to listen to it or not. Okay, this is part three of my TEDx how-to videos. This one is, you got accepted, now what? So this is how do you prepare to give the best TEDx talk that you can give. So when you get in, two things are going to happen. This happens with most TEDx talks. Now, if it doesn't happen with yours, you can make this out on your own, right? One, you're going to get a coach from your TEDx organizer. This is going to be someone who has done a TEDx before. Use them to your advantage. Ask them questions. Ask them for advice. Ask them for tips. Ask them to read your draft. Second, the organizers are going to give you a timeline of things that you have to get done and by when, okay? Because a TEDx talk can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention. You have six months, so you're probably going to say to yourself, if you're a procrastinator, which I am, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I get to it, I have six months. And then all of a sudden, it's time for your TEDx talk and you didn't put enough practice or effort into it. So here is what I suggest. One, follow the timeline that they give you. As soon as you get accepted, start working on an outline. Now, when I started working on my outline, this is what I did. I went back. Now, if you remember in my previous video, I said that when I was applying, I went and watched a bunch of TEDx talks and I took a bunch of notes about what I liked and what I didn't like. I went back to the TEDx talks that I liked and then I wrote out the structure. How did they present their TEDx talk? What was their structure? Did they start with a story or did they start with their big idea or did they start with their learnings? Like how did they start and how did they structure their talk? I also made it a point to go to a TEDx event. Luckily there was a TEDx event about two hours from me um, within the six months that I was preparing for my TEDx event. Super helpful. If you've never been to a TEDx event, highly suggest it. So when you're live in the audience, it's a totally different experience. And when I went to watch the TEDx event, I took a bunch of notes. I took notes about like, what was the audience engaged with? What were they reacting to? Which talks got a standing ovations? Which ones didn't? Which outfits worked on stage? Which ones didn't? This TEDx event, they could use slides. Did the slides add anything? Did they take things away? I took notes on everything that you could imagine. So go see a TEDx event if you can. Now you're going to get this timeline, start on the outline, follow the, follow the timelines because I'm telling you it's super important. Like they gave me the timeline. They said, do your, do your outline. I did it. Then they said, do your first draft. I did it. Second draft. I did it. Final draft was due in October. I wasn't ready to submit my final draft that it was so I got accepted in August. October was the final draft. Jan, end of January is when the talk is happening, right? Middle of October, the draft is due. I panicked. I panicked. When I say I panicked, I, I knew that my out, my, my talk was not where it needed to be, but I hadn't worked on it between the second draft and the, and the final draft. Like I just hadn't done anything. I didn't even know what to do because I hadn't really engaged with anybody to give me feedback. Like I know I had my TEDx coach, right? And she said it was great. So I was like, well, then it's great. And then I sent it to some friends and they were like, this is great. And I, I just didn't, I didn't pay attention to it. But you have to remember that when you give this talk, people are going to hang on to every word you say, right? People are going to dissect how you said things. People are going to take to heart different parts of your talk. So you want to make sure that you have purposely picked every word, every sentence in your talk. You need to make sure you have trimmed the fat, right? So like I say, write everything out that you want to write and then start to massage it, start to trim the fat, start to organize it, start to make the story come alive, right? So it's middle of October. I'm panicking. I submit my final draft. Luckily they don't say anything, but in my head, I know this needs work. So come early November, I go to my, I go to this first TEDx event and I'm in high gear now. While I was at this event, I met a fellow TEDx speaker and she was telling me about coaches and there, there are TEDx coaches. Now I should have known this and part of me probably did, but I, I don't like to spend money if money doesn't need to be spent. So I started to research the coaches and so she gave me a few names and then I Googled a few names and I had some introductory calls. A lot of these coaches will give you a free 15 to 30 minute consultation where they will talk to you about the services they offer. Now I talked to a couple coaches. I'm going to say this, make sure when you speak to your coach, it's not all about the money, right? It's about 
Do you feel a connection? A lot of the coaching is going to happen over zoom, which is very hard to find a connection. So you need to make sure you feel connected to that person. Cause you're going to about to pay them a lot of money, but you're also going to spend a lot of time with them. You want to make sure that they are interested in you just as much as you are interested in them. And I say that because I did two coach calls where all that person did was talk to me about what they could offer me instead of asking me, what do I need help with? Right? I am a stand up comedian. I have a speaking background. So if I'm calling you for coaching, I want you to know that so that you know, I'm where I'm looking for help and where I'm not looking for help. And these two coaches didn't ask that at all. They didn't even ask me what is my idea worth spreading or my topic or what I'm talking. They didn't ask me anything. They just said, here's what we offer you. Here is the price. And that was it. And I was like, yeah, in my head, I was like, that's not happening. But when I was at the TEDx event, there was a speaker who I thought was amazing. Right. When I went to the live event, I approached him and I said, listen, do you want to be my coach? And he was like, well, I'm not really a coach, but we can talk about it. And what I really appreciated about him is we went to dinner and we spent two hours talking about TEDx, about the process, about his experience, about my talk, and he got it. And what I really appreciated is that he took the time to make sure he knew me and he got it. And so that is the advice I give you. If you're going to go and get an external coach, which I highly suggest you do, right? Because this is, again, this is a once in a lifetime experience, invest in yourself, right? One of my friends said, I contacted him. I said, I talked to a coach and she wants $20,000. And I said to him, is that worth it? Right? Is a coach worth it? And he asked me, he goes, what is the ROI, the return of investment on your TEDx talk? Now it is hard to qualify that, but you've got to think, why are you doing a TEDx talk? Is it to get into keynote speaking? Is it to get more keynote speeches? Is it to get more bookings as a speaker? Is it to get a book deal? Like what is your goal with a TEDx and then figure out how much incremental value will you get if you're successful at your TEDx talk, right? If you go viral and then figure out is the price of a coach worth it for me, because I have speaking ability and because I already feel like, I had that under control. What I really wanted help with was actually tweaking the talk. $20,000 was outrageous to me. Even when she said $5,000 and I asked her, what are we going to do? And what are we going to do for $5,000? She said, you get five hours and the first hour will go over one hour. will go over your talk. One hour will go over your presentation. One hour will go over your wardrobe. And the minute she said one hour for my wardrobe, I was like, no, I am not paying you a thousand dollars to tell me what to wear. Okay. So that was a no too. So ask questions and understand, are you going to get from this person what you need? What do you need to work on? Right? So I find this coach and he recommended this book to me, which is called talk like Ted, the nine public speaking secrets of the world's top mind. Highly suggest this book, highly, highly suggest this book. Very informative. They give you a lot of example of TEDx talks to watch. So you can go and watch them, but just like giving you, um, giving you some stuff. So like they talk about like the master, the art of storytelling, the idea of you're having a conversation on stage. You're not presenting. This is not a work. This is not a work presentation. You're not, you're not delivering a speech. You're giving a talk, but you're having a conversation. Um, how to, how to teach something new, how to stick to the 18 minute rule. So they talk about why it's in, why, why Ted picked 18 minutes. My advice to you, go ahead and write the 18 minute talk, but do not give an 18 minute talk. Okay. Because here's the thing. People don't have the attention span for 18 minutes, unless you've got something so amazing to share. You can do it in a shorter amount of time. My TEDx event actually suggested we do between 10 and 12 minutes or maybe it was eight and 12. So aim for 10 to 12 minutes. So go ahead and write the whole thing and then start cutting things, start trimming the fat, start massaging it. Okay. When you start writing your talk, you need to be personable. You need to be authentic and you need to be genuine, but you should also tell people who you are. Why should they listen to you? What, what, why are you so important? Why should they even care? why you're on stage. So be personable, open yourself up. And sometimes you have to be vulnerable. I know when I was giving my, when I was doing the dry rehearsals with the organizers, one thing they kept saying to me is we love how vulnerable you're being. And at first I thought maybe I'm being too vulnerable, but then I realized like they are actually appreciative of it because now they understand my story. They can connect to my story. They understand deep down inside where I'm coming from. And it makes it that much more special 
and that much more important. Now, when you're writing your talk, I mentioned this earlier, stick to one idea. This is not your keynote talk. This is not a 45 minute speech. This is not you sharing everything, right? This is a cliff notes version of your big idea, right? So like when I was writing my talk, I got it down to 10 to 12 minutes and then I started practicing it for people. And I would ask for feedback and people would be like, I'd love it if you gave more examples or I'd love it if you gave more takeaways. I had three takeaways. People are like, I'd love four, I'd love five. You can't take everyone's advice. You also can't fit everything into one TEDx talk, right? This is a sampling. Now, after you do your TEDx event and it goes viral, you can start writing a book or doing a keynote, which is a 45 minute talk, and you can start adding all this extra stuff in it, right? And giving it more meat. But for your TEDx event, you wanna keep it short and sweet and get the message home as hard hitting as you can. Now, a couple other things to remember when you're writing your talk. You're writing it, but you're going to be speaking it. So make sure you write it the way you talk, okay? So as you're writing it, just start saying it out loud conversationally. Is this the way you talk? Are these the words you use? And use short sentences, because remember, when we talk, we use short sentences, but when we write, we tend to write longer form. And structure your talk. Make sure you structure it. Like, and again, I, I copied my structure from watching other TEDx's. I saw what worked and that's the structure I use. So I started with storytelling. I told people who I am. I told people about my love for chicken wings. And then I went into why this big idea came to me. Like what, how was I feeling, right? Like what was, what was my war story? And I talk about my war stories in video one. So go back to that. But what was my war story? And then I talk about what I learned from that war story and how I was able to utilize that war story to resauce myself, which was the theme of my entire talk, resaucing myself. And then lastly, I gave the audience takeaways. How can they go away and resauce their selves? Now, one thing that I did that people really loved is I started with chicken wings in the beginning of my talk, in the first sentence, I talked about chicken wings and I weaved that story throughout my talk. What some people will do if you listen to TEDx talks is they will start with a story and they will not connect the dots any other point in their TEDx talk to the point that when you finish, you're like, well, why did you tell me that story in the beginning? You never referred back to it again, right? So make sure that whatever theme you have, you're carrying it across through your talk. Second, I mentioned this before, be passionate about your talk and what you're writing because you are going to eat, breathe and sleep this talk and it's going to be with you forever. This is who you are going to be. You are going to be the expert on this talk. Okay. So you've written your talk. Now comes what I think is almost the second hardest part about the whole thing. You need to start memorizing it. Now everybody has a different capability of memorizing it. I thought I was a really good memorizer because I'm a comedian and I'm not. So I started memorizing again. My talk was the end of January. I went on vacation in the middle of December for two weeks. And the goal was to sit by the pool or sit by the beach. I went on a, I went to Mexico and just work on my talk, memorize, memorize, memorize. And I, every day I read it and I tried to memorize it. And I went, what I did is I had my talk and I knew my talk was about 12 minutes. So I had every minute printed out on a page. I kind of had timed it out. So I had 12 pages and that gave me a visual representation of where I was. So like I kind I knew the beginning and the end of each page. So as I was memorizing it, I could get to the end of page one and, and remember what was the top of page two. So I was visually memorizing my talk as well. And I went page by page, like day one, learn page one, day two, learn page two, day three, bring one and two together. So figure out what works for you. For me, it really helped to split it out amongst a lot of different pages. As I started memorizing, I realized I had written the way I write and not the way I speak. So again, now I'm starting to make edits again to the talk. So you're always going to be editing your talk and that's okay. I edited my talk until three days before my actual talk happened. And I didn't want to do that. I was very nervous about doing that because one, the talk was so ingrained in me that even the changes I made, I kept saying it the old way instead of the new way. And I was so nervous on stage, I was gonna mess up. So that, I, it wasn't the best idea, but I think that the changes I made were for the better. So for me, I, I still would go and make those changes. But I know my coach was getting really anxious because he was like, you've got to stop making changes. 
But the more I was practicing it, the more I was saying it, I was like, this, this part is not me, or this part doesn't make sense here. I'm going to move it here. So it is okay to keep tweaking it. Just make sure that you can still memorize it. So it took me four weeks to fully memorize it, like to fully, fully, fully get it into my core, get it into my skin and bones. So, and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to get down on yourself and you're going to say, Oh my God, why can't I get this? I was practicing in front of people and I would forget lines that were the easiest lines. Like there was lines in my talk that I knew from the beginning. And then there was talk lines that I was struggling with. And then I would forget the lines I knew and I would get nervous. But here's the thing. It's better to forget and mess up before you get on the main stage. So the more you mess up beforehand, the better you're going to do on the main stage. Okay. That is something else to remember. This is your talk. Only you know what's in the talk. So if you forget something on stage, two things, it's your story. If you forget something on stage, keep it moving. Nobody else knows that you forgot something unless you tell them. And second, if you feel like you forgot something, but it needs, you need something there because you're trying to go from point A to point C and you need a B, it's your story. Make it up, go on, not like make it up, like make believe, but like work on the fly. You know your story. You know your big idea in your core. You might not know the exact words that you wanted to say, but you know the story. So go with the flow, okay? And if it makes you feel better, and makes you feel more safe and more secure, have somebody in the audience, like your coach, give them your script and tell them, Hey, can you hold my script? And if I'm on stage and I freeze or I don't know where I am, I'm going to say line and I want you to give me the line. And that will give you a sense of security, like your security blanket. Okay. So you're worked, you've written your script, you're memorizing while you're memorizing, you're still tweaking your talk and that's okay. Now, you're three to four weeks away from your talk. Now is the time you need to start practicing saying it out loud to people, to an audience. More time if you don't have strong public speaking ability or confidence or you haven't done a lot of public speaking, I might take more time or and not even practicing your talk maybe, but giving more speeches. So whether it's joining a Toastmasters club or going to an open mic or a poetry slam, something where you can get on stage in front of people and work on your stage presence and your confidence and your speaking. Cause some people speak really fast when they're in front of other people. I do this too. I can speak super fast when I'm nervous. Any of when I'm not nervous. I just feel like my brain's working so fast, like, and I've had to learn how to slow it down. Okay. So you're three to four weeks out, start practicing in front of people, start setting up zoom calls with your friends and family, start reaching out to people like Toastmasters club, a lot of Toastmasters club, especially like if they're in your area, like in your local area, or your coach might know them, your coach could be in a Toastmasters club or put out a notice on Facebook to your friends who's in a Toastmasters club. A lot of times they will give you 10 minutes of their meeting to come in and practice. And again, this is the time when you call in favors. This is the time when you ask people for help. This is the time when you reach out to people. Okay. I know sometimes it's hard. It's really hard for me to ask for help. It's really hard for me to reach out to people because I know everyone's super busy and I did my TEDx talk in 2022. So I was practicing during 2021 when the Delta variant and the Omicron variant are really strong. And I know people were stressed and everyone's got their own stuff going and you don't want to bother them, but this is important and people want to see you succeed. Now is the time to reach out to people. This is important. This is, this is it. Like this is a pinnacle. What you don't want to do is be shy and maybe your ego is in the way. Maybe you just don't like asking for help. This is not the time because when you're on that stage, right? And you forget your lines or you're not comfortable or you come off that stage and you realize you could have done better. It's because you didn't put enough effort into it. And so that's why it's really important to start practicing, practice, practice, practice. And let me tell you something. You can tell me you practice in front of your mom and dad or your brother and sister or your friends like a hundred times. It is very different performing in front of them than it is performing in front of strangers. Okay. So highly, highly suggest finding strangers to go practice in front of. So, okay. You're working on your talk. You're writing it, you're writing it, you're writing it. Then you're memorizing it, memorizing, memorizing. You're still tweaking it, cutting the fat, massaging it, making sure that it's your story. 
and then you're pr practicing it. And as you're practicing it, you're still going to be making tweaks to it. And that's okay. Make those tweaks, reshuffle, organize, craft it, but keep working on your talk for that last, those last three to four weeks, every day should be about that talk. Like you work out every day, maybe, or how you walk your dog every day, every day you should be practicing that talk. Even if it's for just an hour, you should still be practicing that talk. I made it a goal of mine every day before I went to sleep. I had to say the whole talk without looking at the script. When you're practicing, videotape yourself every time you practice. Videotape your Zoom calls, videotape your audiences, everything. Because what you wanna pay attention to is when you do a TEDx talk, you have a circle, right? You've got the red dot. Now, I've been given this advice and you can take it with a grain of salt because I, some people do it, some people don't. You can watch videos. I was told that you shouldn't take more than one step forward back to the left or to the right. Like you should not be walking the circle. And here's why, because the camera is following you, one. And two, most consumption of TEDx talks are via YouTube or the internet. And people like it if you stay still. People can't, people, people lose attention when they have to follow you on the screen. It, it, I don't remember the psychology, but someone was trying to explain it to me. So they were like, try not to move a lot. So when you're practicing, you really want to be conscious about not being too still. You don't want to seem rigid or like, you know, like you, you're so scared to move. You want to be comfortable moving. You want to be able to use your hands for gesturing, but you don't want to be like distracting like this. Like I, I didn't realize I did this, but when I talk, I do this a lot. Like, you know, and somebody was like, why do you keep, you know, doing this? And I, I didn't even know. So. There was things that I had to work on. I had to work on not standing too still, but being okay moving. I had to work on my gesturing. I had to remember to smile. I was so focused on not forgetting my lines that I forgot to smile. That's why it's so important to start memorizing early because once you've memorized it, you're, it's not even memorized anymore. Now it's ingrained in you, right? It's part of your soul. Okay, so you're gonna tape yourself and then you're gonna watch these tapes. I'm not just saying to tape yourself for the hell of it. You're gonna go home and you're gonna watch these and take notes so that each time that you present, you can get better and better and better and get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then lastly, your clothes, your outfit. You want to be comfortable on stage. There is no set dress code when you do a TEDx talk. Go and watch them. People come in jeans, people come in jeans and a t-shirt. People, some people you look like they didn't even get dressed in the morning they like they didn't care my personal opinion is be comfortable but this is also your time to shine so dress the part so if you want to wear jeans and a t-shirt fine but iron your jeans and iron your shirt please like don't look like you just woke up out of bed don't look like you didn't care right look like you care because people came to see you the audience came to see you make give them something to look at and then go up there and have fun just have fun the audience is there to support you. Nobody wants to see you fail, okay? Everybody wants to see you succeed. Everyone is there to watch you do what you do, to share your big idea. This is your moment. Enjoy it, take it in, and then go out and celebrate because you are done. And that is it. Those are the those are the tips and advice I have to you to be an excellent TEDx speaker. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, Drop it in the comments below and I will get to you. Thank you so much and good luck.